Hi there, I'm Tom from TechRadar. Now, smartphone cameras have become increasingly better over the past few years, and the iPhone X is no exception. This can shoot in 4K up to 60 frames per second. So, if it's that good, how does it stack up against a proper cinema camera? I was recently in Cambridge where I was shooting with the iPhone X alongside the Red Scala X, both in 4K at 24 frames per second. Now it's worth noting that on the iPhone X I did download a third party app called Filmic Pro which cost £15. Now this allowed for the best possible bitrate data to come from the video, but what I would have liked to have seen from Apple is for them to include more manual options in the native app. This meant for me to really have manual control over the video, I had to download a third party app. Now before we look at the footage, it's worth noting that the red shoots in a very flat picture style. Now this is designed for the user to colour grade in post to get the most detail in the shadows and highlights. Whereas the iPhone camera gives you a strong amount of contrast and saturation out of the box. So for this comparison, I've colour graded all of the red footage to align more closely with the iPhone X footage. This puts both of them on an even playing field so you can see dynamic range and detail better. Speaking of detail and dynamic range, I did a blind test with my colleague Basil, where I asked him to look at the shots without him knowing which camera was which. Here's what he thought. Hey guys, I'm Basil and I've been asked to blind test footage across the iPhone and the Red Scarlet. Um, so starting with detail and dynamic range, let's hit play. Shut up and kiss me before you miss me. Okay, so the first uh, scene is a guy strumming guitar, 4K, nice and sharp, quite flat, and that's jumped to a much more saturated, much more sharpened piece of footage that you can see a lot more artifacting, more noise, and it's, yeah, pretty clear which is which. The grain on the right-hand side image is starker. It's more processed out, so you've got more punch, more pop, um, but it isn't as pleasing an image, and that's down to well, everything really, uh, starting with the depth of field, which was immediately the telltale giveaway, the saturation, which means it's had a shed load of in onboard processing, and the sharpness has been bumped up. Soon after hitting record on both of the cameras, that's when the sun decided to come up, thus bringing the exposure up by quite a bit. Now, as you can see with camera one, it dealt with it pretty well. On camera two, however, it really struggled and the highlights completely blew out, making for quite an unflattering image. More guitar strumming. Um, saturation's there, you haven't got the depth of field, and by contrast, as soon as you jump over to the flatter image, which I'm guessing was shot on the red, it is flatter, and a lot of people it might be undersaturated, but you've got real clarity in the forefront, the dynamic range is better as well. There are less blown out areas around his face, but less saturation. So some people might want their device to produce a more, I guess, consumer ready shot. Um, and that's what the iPhone, I'm guessing that's what that one was, seems to do. Right, now it's buildings. And this one's way harder because the backdrop is, it's all far away. The depth of field isn't a telltale giveaway. When you look really closely, the grass in the first one has more artifacting. It's so close though, so I'm super impressed. I reckon the first one is the iPhone and the second one is a red. But what that also means, the iPhone in the sky pulls out more color, pulls out more blue, whereas the red just defaults to white. Okay, and next a tilt across two devices. This isn't really about which is flatter and which is less flat. It's about which I prefer. And actually, we're, um, the bottom feels like I'm in the cinema and I'm watching a film. The top feels like the home video I'd prefer. But I think most people, if they took that shot, would be more impressed with what I think at least is the iPhone shot. Again, dynamic range is stronger in the top one as well. So in video, Apple might have a really smart HDRing that, at play in order to pull detail out from the sky. Now there's a brass band. First shot was pretty pumped in saturation, pretty high in contrast as well. 
The second shot a fair bit flatter, kind of stylized, kind of has a sepia kind of hue to it. Um, I much prefer the second shot, but what's interesting um, is that the first shot actually looks sharper. The dynamic range is worse and you can really tell that's the case around the tarpaulin. Right now the flowers, because there's nothing really blowing out the dynamic range here, the iPhone just looks looks like a better shot for flowers. Flowers benefit from up saturation, punch and pop. So I'm gonna go with the top one for the flower shot. Okay, so the low light shots you've got left and right, there's better bokehing on the right hand side. Colors are less saturated, um, but the image is sharper. Looks like this left hand side image is softer and that's probably down to noise reduction. It's very clear that there's more soft, much more softening going in on the left hand side going on and that softening is counteracting the grain really really well so there isn't a huge amount of noise. Okay final low light shot left and right there's more much more grain in the right hand side shot much much more especially in the white part of the sign but what's also really noticeable is how overly softened the left hand image is but in saying that the right hand side image's grain would be a problem. And so in those situations, I might actually prefer an iPhone. Okay, and the last round, stabilization and rolling shutter or jelly effect. And the first video, the from whatever device has pulled out a lot of high contrast in the grass and in her hair. And as a result, you've got some blown out areas, nicely saturated. And the sky isn't interestingly too blown out. As for the second one, you've got much, much, much better kind of levels of contrast, or I say much flatter levels. So you don't have anything blown out, neither in her hair nor in the grass. Um, lens flare coming in there suggests it's the red, the way the lens flared really nicely. In terms of the stabilization, it's just night and day. The left hand side one is giving me a bit of a headache um, when it's cropped in that closely. Um, whereas the right hand side one is really, really decent. Right, so now I know which is which across all of them and yes, I know my iPhones and my Reds to a degree. I was right across them all, but what that's really shown me is where the iPhone excels by comparison to this behemoth of a cinema camera. In detail, it's good, but the iPhone does over sharpen and the dynamic range is actually really, really impressive. Apple just like, well, they may employ an HDR video um, kind of algorithm in there, taking advantage of the super fast processor and the imaging processing unit. The tilt impressive me a lot across both um, but the iPhone in particular just felt really really nice and like pulled all of the contrast that I wanted from the buildings I liked the iPhones it was more ready for um, sharing with friends and family felt less like a movie but really noticeably in the tarpaulin the dynamic range was worse the iPhones pumped up the saturation in the flowers and for a flower shot that's pretty much exactly what I want when it comes to the um, low light shots though that's when I was most kind of torn between the two because you had all this grain in the red um, and this isn't the most premium sensor. Tom has informed me that uh, like red has sensors that are better adept at handling low light but still this is a sufficiently expensive sensor but red doesn't apply noise reduction whereas Apple clearly models this image to the nines in dropping the noise in the low light shot. Across the board I think the biggest telltale or the most clear telltale was the fact that the red camera produced consistent depth of field or consistently shallow depth of field owing to the fact you're shooting on a lot of glass and you've got a very nice big sensor. Whereas the iPhone can't compete with that and while they've able, been able to have like fake bokeh in photos, we're not quite there with videos just yet. Now going into this, obviously I knew the RED was going to produce better images. However, I was really impressed by the iPhone X, especially for how small the camera really is. Now of course it does have a lot of shortcomings here and there, but you can expect that for a camera with such a small sensor size. The iPhone X is designed to be a point and shoot camera, giving you incredible detail with strong contrast and saturation straight out of the box. Now this is perfect if you're a casual user just posting to social media. 
whereas the Red Scarlet X shoots in a very flat picture style, designed to be colour corrected in post. Now the reason why Red does this is because there's a lot of different shooting styles out there. You might want to shoot a documentary or you might want to shoot a narrative film and having that flat picture style just gives you much more versatility. But case in point, if you want to have a camera with you at all times and don't want to go through the fuss of editing every single time, then the iPhone X is a pretty good bet. So if you haven't already, you can head over to techradar.com where you can find our full review of the iPhone X. In there, they'll have much more information about the stills camera of this phone. Thanks for watching.